wait to show you what I got planned this weekend. We finally got sun today. I'm so excited. And I got Mandy with. Do you want to be on camera? No. Oh. And Tilly's come along for this week's adventure. Check this out. It's like the county is out here doing some work. Let me show you where we're at. A specific reason that I came here this morning, uh, rifle season is closed here. And we're north of Staples, Minnesota at a place called Bullard Bluff Campground. This is a county campground. It costs you 14 bucks, but it's a nice one. And other than that maintenance worker, we're the only ones out here. The campground's right on the Crow Wing River. This is a beautiful view. camp set up we got to try and get ourselves leveled out i think i'm gonna have to use the camper jacks for that though i think i just got to use this jack right here to lift this side of the camper up probably two inches Looks good to me. I can see I'm gonna have to adjust these legs a little bit. The steps are gonna be a little steep. I'm just gonna make them as long as possible. Just like that. I've really enjoyed these steps. I weigh 280 pounds, so I need to have a good set of steps. You can see how I was getting in the camper with these guys right here and that was quite the step so the steps have been coming in handy someone asked about them they're a torque lift they're called the stone glow steps let's get the slide out i bet we don't see anybody out here all week well that's it camp is set up let me show you this campground we've got vault toilets garbage bins deer tracks and a boat landing we're in Medina County, right here at Bullers Bluff. You can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine campgrounds along the Crowing River. So it's $14 for the campsite. And here's the deal. If you don't pay and they come around and check, then it's gonna be $28. How do I get it in there? Done. They're all county maintained campgrounds. In fact, there's been a big truck going through here this morning putting gravel on the road, which is a good idea because I came out here probably about six months ago and almost got stuck. I didn't make a video at this spot. I found a different place because there was people here. What I think is that a lot of people use these campgrounds in the summertime to float down the river. Right now though, we got it all to ourselves. Some of the campsites are massive. It's a beautiful day out, about 35 degrees right now. Mandy still doesn't want to be on camera, but I don't blame her. Tilly doesn't mind being on camera though. Someone asked, why is she on a leash? Well, Mandy lives in town and there's city ordinances that say you gotta have your dog on a leash. So Tilly's just always been on a leash. She's getting to be an old lady, not Mandy, Tilly. I 
I gotta get back to the campsite because tonight it's gonna be a little pre-Thanksgiving warm-up. Wait till you see what I got going on the fire. One day I'm gonna pick up one of those Milwaukee chainsaws. The Sawzall works good for now because that's what I got. But I've got a bunch of Milwaukee batteries. I think I'm gonna look for a Milwaukee chainsaw. One day, let's see if we can find some wood. This is pretty cool. The county puts this slab wood out here. You can have as much as you want for free. I think it's a good idea doing it this way. I mean. People won't have to go into the woods and cut down live trees. I'll get a stack of this cut up and I'll meet you back up by the camper. Well, I thought, why not just bring the firewood right to the camp? This will be easier. not going to be cooking over this slab wood because it's pretty much just pine bark. What we're going to do is get the fire going and then I have some lump charcoal and some cherry wood because I'm going to be smoking an 11 pound turkey over the campfire today. Sounds like I got a family of crows right above me. And I'm smoking the turkey on the tripod. I've smoked a lot of different meats over the campfire, but I've never tried smoking a whole turkey. The problem I knew I would have smoking a turkey is I'm just keeping consistent heat. I use a smoker at home all the time. I have a pellet smoker and it works absolutely awesome. But I was a little reluctant to give a turkey a try. Thankfully a viewer, he actually makes a product just for this kind of stuff, other uses as well. And I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So it was a viewer that actually brought this product to my attention. Down in the comments, they saw me smoking, I think a tomahawk, and they said, you should check out this scoff. It's a smoker, cooker, oven, fire preventer, fire saver. So I went on the website, took a look, and sure enough, thing looked pretty cool. Called up the owner, his name is Todd. I wanted to buy one. He wouldn't sell it to me. He's like, I watch your channel all the time. I would be happy to send one out to you. I'd love to see it on your videos. So I was like, all right, but I wanted to pay him. He wouldn't take my money. So today we're gonna try it. This is my first time setting it up. It honestly took me, what was that? 20 seconds? It's got a little temperature gauge here, door. We're gonna set it over the fire. I'm gonna hang the turkey inside here. Oh, this is gonna be cool. We're gonna find out together how well this works.
we'll season it. I'll let this fire burn down, and then we'll add the lump charcoal. I'll get the turkey out here in a little bit. Well, let's talk about the turkey. I gotta say, Todd, I appreciate your faith. You've tuned in weekly, watching me burn countless numbers of meats on the grill. So this is really gonna be putting your product to the test. What I got here is this 11 pound turkey. I've had this brining in a saltwater bath for probably the last 30 hours. We're gonna hang it over the campfire. I've got this custom bent rod. I have no clue how this is gonna work. First time trying it. Maybe put it to the back. Yeah, I like it. Can you put zip ties on a fire? I don't know. I wish I had butcher's twine, but I don't. Check it out. I got zip ties holding this thing together. Let's put it on. Well, I've noticed that we've been able to hold 225 pretty easily. Gotta get the bird hung inside. I want it to hang about there. Awesome. And to adjust the heat, we can just move this up and down. For the heat source, I'm just using this mix of hardwood lump charcoal. And then I also have some hickory that I went and soaked in the river. Nice and wet. This should give us a lot of smoke. I was gonna spatchcock the bird just to try and save some time, but there's just something about looking at that whole bird put out on the table, all nice golden brown. It's two o'clock right now. I'm hoping that by eight o'clock we're eating supper. I know six hours does not sound like a long time to smoke a turkey. And spatchcocking would definitely get this done quicker. But I did some looking and hanging a bird like that is also kind of a shortcut in the cooker. Well, at least I hope so anyways. Two twenty-five. Man, that smoke smells good. And for the first few hours, I'm really gonna put the smoke to it. I stopped at Walmart and picked up some hickory. I'm just cutting the bigger chunks up into smaller pieces. And just throwing it in the fire. It creates nice smoke. Let's take our first peek at it. That is looking good. Another hour or so, I'm gonna put a temperature probe in the thigh and we'll just monitor it. It'll take some time. Hopefully this turkey tastes as good as it smells. We've just been hanging around the campground most of the afternoon and this is a beautiful spot.
getting dark out is just a bummer. But I got the temperature probe, let's stick it in the bird, see where we're at, it's been about four hours. I've been able to hold about 240 degrees in the smoker all afternoon. Wow, that bird is looking just perfect. You know, it's kind of hard to see. Everywhere I'm testing in the bird says it's done. It can't be ready to pull off. You think? Four, four and a half hours? I guess we're pulling it off. That was quick. Everywhere I looked in the bird said it was like 180 degrees. So maybe it is time to pull it off. All right. I think I'm gonna bring this inside, wrap it up in some foil, and then we'll dig into this. Even a little popper popped out. All right, turkey is wrapped up. For a side, we're just gonna be making a few Brussels sprouts and I'll put these right on the tripod. Couple tablespoons of butter. I don't make Brussels sprouts edible anyways. Thanks, Mandy. Well, the good news is the bird still looks excellent. It's probably gonna be a little bit dry. That's my fault. I never would have expected it to smoke that quickly. We'll take a look at it later. Let me get the Brussels sprouts on. I don't think that these are gonna take very long. This cooker is definitely an oven. Well, I think that's been about long enough. Well, let's go make some turkey dinner. Any tricks? Definitely can't have a turkey sandwich without cranberries. Take a quick look at that turkey before we get into it. Initially, I thought it was gonna be a little dry, but I had some of the leg and thigh. It's awesome. I tell you what, you put a 115 pound dog on the floor, you start losing space in the truck camper real quick. But my first attempt at using the smoker, not too bad at all. I'll be honest, I overcooked it just a little bit though. The breast meat is still really good. Um, the wings, they got dried out. There was some dark meat on the thighs and the legs, but you had to pick through it. All in all though, honestly, not too bad. Supper was good. I am so full. That little campfire oven, that's a game changer. I'll definitely be using it in the future. That's for sure. I was gonna try and bring Tilly outside, but if you know the Rottweiler breed and you know how loyal they are, she ain't gonna come out here unless Mandy comes out here. Mandy says she's ready for bed. I had some people ask, why don't I have a dog when I'm out here camping? And um, if you guys have been with me for a while know that my dog, Hannah, she passed away earlier this spring. She was nine, big Rottweiler as well. Um, she made Tilly look small. But Anna showed up in a couple of the videos early on and um, she was kind of my girl's protector. So when I first started the channel, uh, Adele was 15 and Kaya was 17 and they would stay home on the weekends and I'd go out camping and they always told me that I had to leave Hannah at home. So when I first started the channel, I did some projects out in the garage and that's where you got to meet Hannah if you ever seen any of the first videos. But I have recently started looking for another dog, um, hoping that the right dog finds me. There's a shelter close to home. It's called the Babinski Foundation. You can go online and take a look and see what dogs are there. Mandy and I, we went there the other day and I played with some dogs, but 
it's gonna take some time. The right one will find me eventually. It's getting a little chilly out here. It's low 20s right now. I think it got up to the high 40s today. Same thing tomorrow for the high, 48 degrees. Unseasonably warm for late November in Minnesota. But I left the camper door open pretty much all day because Tilly was going in and out, in and out. I had the furnace running because Mandy wanted to stay warm. And I think that my house batteries are drained pretty low. And I do have an option. I could start up the generator and drag out the cables, let the generator run all night long. Or this week after work, I installed the generator plug inside the camper. And, uh, let's go inside and I can show you what I did. Someone's had a big day today, but check out my battery. It's bouncing between 12.2 and 12.3. That's no good. And if I was sitting at 12.5, 12.6 volts, I'd say no problem. The furnace is gonna run all night long. 12.2, 12.3, we're gonna have issues. And that's why I installed this generator outlet plug. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut the power to the main and then I'm going to turn on the breaker and that's going to allow me to energize this plug and then I can plug in the power station and this is how I'm going to make it all happen the all powers are 2500 watt power supply it's 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter 2016 watt hour capacity we can see that the generator plugs got power now now with all of the lights in the camper on, my batteries are charging, I'm pulling 358 watts. And I can monitor everything right on my cell phone using the All Powers app. As far as my camper is concerned, I'm plugged into shore power right now. With the All Powers R2500, I'm getting a lot closer to finally being able to take that generator off the front of the truck. And that's my goal, it's not have to lug that around anymore. The All Powers R2500, it's completely expandable, up to 20 kilowatt hours of power capacity. That's way more than I'll need in the truck camper. And with the 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter, I don't have to worry about drawing too much power. And the unit's capable of a 4000 watt surge, which means I can run the air conditioner, the coffee pot and the toaster all at the same time. I'm gonna sleep a lot better tonight, knowing that my batteries are gonna stay charged and we're gonna stay warm. I mean, what are we up to? 13.4 volts. It's been a long day and I'm getting tired, but tomorrow morning we're gonna get up, we're gonna see how the power station handled, plugged in, running all night long, and we'll see where the house batteries are at. And then hopefully it's sunny out, we can bring this outside, plug in the solar. If we were here two nights, we would do this all over again. We'll get into more of that tomorrow. For tonight, I'm off to bed. We had power all night last night. It got down to 22 degrees, and I think it's about 27 degrees out this morning. I got up, been working on the computer. I got a pot of coffee going. The furnace has been running. Power station, it's still sitting at 24%, and we got 13.7 volts on the batteries. Power station can run this camper all night long. It's gonna be nice this winter, that's for sure. The AGM batteries that I got in there, they're getting a little tired. I wouldn't have been able to make it another winter if I didn't have the power station. Better I'd be buying batteries. I can't afford that. It's nice to know that when I'm camping this winter, it's 40 below zero. I'm still gonna have power inside the camper. I should be able to stay warm as long as I don't forget the propane. We're gonna have another beautiful day. 
I'm socked in the trees here. Getting solar, that might be an issue. The nice thing about having the portable panels is that I can move them anywhere. They're not attached to the roof of the truck. So just go for a little bit of a walk. We'll find some open area. The scope cooker, what a game changer. You're definitely gonna be seeing me using this a lot more. This is awesome. You see at Costco, they got some ribeye roasts. Can you imagine smoking big old prime rib over the campfire? That might have to happen. Like a glove. I think it's about 35 degrees out right now. Just a little bit of wind. Let's get this tripod taken apart. I picked the tripod up at Walmart and it was like 25 bucks, something like that. Not too bad. If you're interested in one of these cookers, I'll put Todd's website um, in the description and you can go check it out. He's also has some videos on YouTube of how to use it and the different types of foods that he smoked. Everything from roasts to pizzas, uh, chicken, you name it. And he charges $80 for the smoker, but they've got a special with Black Friday, I think uh, asking 70 bucks. So not too bad at all. Definitely go check it out. And my custom turkey hanger, well, I just went to Fleet Farm, bought some round stock, and bent it up. It's nice to have a place for everything. I took the back seat out of the truck years ago, well before the YouTube channel. and It's uh, giving me a lot more storage. Maybe one day I'd like to build some shelves in there yet. That's probably why I watch so many different YouTube channels, just because it's fun to see how people have stuff set up. Even though it's personalized for them, it just gives you a lot of ideas. So we got six more, these campgrounds on the Crow Wing River to check out. You remember the last time Mandy came camping with me? We stayed at one of these county campgrounds. It looks like it's gonna stop raining. We should probably head over and pay for this campsite right after I win. <laughs> I don't think so. There was this. Ah. <laughs> uh, I won. Yeah, you did. I, I lost. <laughs> Good job. Otherwise, I haven't stayed in them much, but they are really, really nice. There's just something about camping on the water. It's so relaxing. And I could totally be wrong about rifle season over here. I looked on the map. It looks like just west of Brainerd, Highway 1. That's kind of the line where I hunt just south of Brainerd. We just have the two weekends. And I thought that this area closed last weekend. I could be wrong. You'll have to tell me down below. I think the deer were safe in here though. There's tracks everywhere. Cool would it be if all those other campgrounds were as nice as this one? Well, now that we got the sun up in the sky, I'm thinking this might be the perfect time to check out the solar panels and see how close am I actually getting to being able to take that generator off the front of my truck. The plan is to have the capability to run the air conditioner during the summer all day long. I don't have room for 800 watts of solar on the roof of the camper. 
they do have a couple of different styles of panels we're going to check them out see could it actually be a reality could i actually get rid of that generator that's the plan and it is just beautiful out here today we got some sun so i figured i'd kind of show you what i'm going to do for the solar this is my old solar array 400 watts it's from all powers i've pulled as many as 380 watts out of these panels many many times they fold up nice nice little suitcase they're always in the back of the truck you probably see them on every video that uh, i'm shooting from inside the truck but they're limited sitting on the ground all powers came up with the solution and it's the sf200 it's their flexible solar panel line pretty cool 200 watts check out how light it is you can easily easily carry these around where the 400 watt folding panel gets a little heavy at times what i did is i put suction cups on the camper check it out these little suction cups they hold five pounds picked them up at the hardware store that's what i've been hanging the panels on and the cool thing about the panels is they can go anywhere you can put them on the roof of your car hood of your truck or just suction cup them to the side of your camper we're going to hook them up in series it's just Positive to negative to positive to negative. Done. We're pulling in about 450 watts of solar. We got a little bit of overcast. We're in northern Minnesota, late November, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's about what I would expect. At this rate, it's going to take a little over four hours to charge the power supply. Not too bad. So if you find yourself in the market for a power station, definitely go check out the R2500, 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter, 2016 watt hours of use. And uh, it's gonna be on sale now through November 30th. Regularly, 1599, it's gonna be down to 1099. Also, make sure you check out their solar panels. All Powers has been in company for quite a while. They're top name in the solar panel industry. I really think it's the affordability and ease of use that keeps me from not putting a solar system inside the camper. Well, there we go. I think we got this video in the bag. Mandy, myself, and Tilly, we want to thank you for hanging out with us all weekend, but it's been all weekend. And that's long enough. I got to get home. I got work tomorrow. We'll see you guys again next Tuesday. Until then, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.